There's been a recent spate of horrific dog attacks in the United Kingdom. I was checking out a Facebook page which isn't getting the attention it deserves. It's called Improve UK Breed Specific Legislation, Ban Staffordshire Pit Bull Terriers. On this page you will find link after link to recent dog attacks in the UK, most of them perpetrated by pit bull type dogs called Staffordshire Terriers, or as dog nuts like to call them, Staffies. They give them this cute sounding name to make it seem like they are sweet and harmless, but in reality they are bloodthirsty killers that kill in cold blood and are killing and disfiguring people, mainly children, in unprovoked attacks on a regular basis. Not all of these dogs attack and kill, obviously, but regardless of how they are raised or trained, they are all unpredictable ticking time bombs that should not exist in our communities. Under UK law, the Dangerous Dogs Act bans four breeds of dogs from being owned or bred. These are the American Pit Bull Terrier, the Japanese Tosa, the Doggo Argentino, and the Fila Brasileiro. Often confused with the banned Pit Bull Terrier breed, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier is not banned in the UK. These Staffordshire Terriers and other bully breeds, such as the American Bulldog, which are also not banned, are wreaking havoc. You have to understand that all bully breeds, all dogs with blocky heads and muscular bodies, were purpose-bred to be efficient killers. They were all bred to attack unprovoked and show no warning signs before attacking, unlike other breeds, which do show warning signs. Any sudden movement or sound can set them off. They were bred to bait bulls and bears. Unlike other breeds which bite and let go, bully breeds, all of these dogs with blocky heads, were bred to clamp down on their victim, shake and not let go until their victim dies. They were bred for what they call gameness. This is the quality of not being deterred by anything while attacking. They are relentless in their attacks. Nothing stops them, not even pain. In fact, pain only intensifies their attacks. It makes no difference how the dog was trained or raised. All of this is in their DNA. It could be the sweetest dog and show no aggression for years until, boom, one day it snaps and does what its genetics have programmed it to do. You never know which dog is going to snap. It's a game of Russian roulette. Just like a herding breed will often show instinctual herding behavior regardless of its upbringing or training, a fighting breed will display the grisly behaviors it was bred for regardless of how it was trained or raised. Who on earth would want such dangerous animals in our communities? You'd think only ignorant people who don't know the facts about them would want them around. However, once presented with the facts, most people will deny the truth about these bred for blood sport killing machines and still want to maintain their presence in our society. It boggles my mind, with so many different breeds to choose from, why get a fighting breed that is implicated in the vast majority of serious dog attacks? If you really need a dog, why not get a poodle or some other breed that isn't known for killing people or ripping their limbs and faces off on a regular basis? Like I Hate Dogs said in one of his recent videos, you nutcases are crazy to the point where you make others crazy with rage because of your stupidity and how it impacts the society as a whole. Dog lovers insist that whenever a dog attacks, it must have been abused or mistreated when there is simply no evidence to suggest this. The owners and witnesses say the dogs were raised with love, but nope, the dog lovers say the owners must be lying. They say the dogs must have shown aggression in the past. They must be irresponsible owners, otherwise the dogs would not have attacked anyone. The dogs must have been provoked. No way did they attack unprovoked. Even when it's very clear the dogs were not provoked. I am providing you a link in the description to the triggers that prompt pit bull type dogs to attack. These reasons include such things as being in a wheelchair, coughing in bed, dropping a glass, getting off a bus, hanging laundry, playing on a swing set, opening a car door, sitting on a bed, sitting in a stroller, walking to school, slipping on ice, taking out the trash, the list goes on. It's just a long list of normal everyday activities with links to the stories all obtained from independent sources for you to read through. 
Similar attacks are occurring every single day by the thousands. Yet I know that Pitbull advocates will spin each and every one of these stories in such a way as to paint the dog in a favorable light while blaming the victim. It's never the dog's fault with these people. It's always the human's fault. They will deny the evidence, staring them in the face, and insist on repeating the mantra they have been programmed to believe, that there are no bad dogs, only bad owners. How can you reason with people who deny reality? Most won't even read the reports. They keep their heads buried in the sand and call us things like racist or cold-hearted or crazy for wanting to get these land sharks out of our communities. They say things like, my dog has never attacked anyone. I've never been bitten. My friend's dogs have never bitten anyone. No one cares. Your personal anecdotal evidence is of no consequence. Why are you unable to look beyond your own nose? Just because something hasn't happened to you personally doesn't mean it isn't happening to a lot of other people, because it is. If it were any other identifiable group of people or animals severely injuring humans in such a brutal manner and on such a regular basis, we'd collectively be outraged and we would do whatever it takes to put an end to it and ensure public safety. But instead of seeing dogs as the enemy they are, we call them man's best friend. We worship them. Instead of urging our leaders to enforce laws that would protect us from dog attacks, people rally and lobby to prevent and repeal such bans and restrictions, and they fight to maintain the presence of dangerous dogs in our society. What on earth is going on? Why do people do this? The only animal in the world that needs animal control, and yet the most loved pet in the Western world. People are utterly insane. Over the years, there have been countless stories in the news of people and pets and livestock being attacked by Staffordshire Terriers and other bully breeds in the UK. And you can read a bunch of these stories on the Facebook page I mentioned, uh, just to mention a couple of the more serious recent UK attacks. In November last fall, a baby boy named Reuben McNulty, who was less than a month old, was attacked by the family's Staffordshire Terrier which his parents said was, quote, their baby too. The baby boy died in hospital three weeks later from his injuries. Just last week, Frankie McCritchie, nine years old, was attacked and killed by a bulldog-type dog while inside of a van. On April 1st of this year, six-year-old Reese Jones was retrieving a ball from the neighbor's garden when a Staffordshire Terrier attacked him. He sustained serious injuries and spent five days in the hospital. He's physically scarred for life now, not to mention traumatized, probably for life. And what's absolutely sickening is that right under the story on the Wales Online website, right under the pictures of Reese's horrifically mauled body, is a link to a different article entitled Six Signs Your Dog Loves You, with a picture of a dog with puppy dog eyes being portrayed as sweet and loving, Unbelievable stuff. This is crazy Twilight Zone stuff. You cannot escape this constant barrage of propaganda telling us how great dogs are, even on the same page as a story of a dog that horrifically mauled a six-year-old boy. It's truly surreal, unbelievable, and disgusting. And the scariest part is how people don't realize how surreal, unbelievable, and disgusting it is. I'm utterly sickened by the comments on this story about Reese. Of course, just like on every story of a child being attacked by a dog, the comments are full of people saying the dog was only doing its job of protecting its property and the boy had it coming because he went into the neighbor's garden. Was the boy really a threat? Really? He's six years old. How threatening is he? A child should be able to retrieve his ball from the neighbor's yard without fear of being attacked or killed. It makes me sick how the public shows no compassion for the boy, for any child in, in a dog attack. Uh, it's always the same. When a child is attacked, they always suggest the child, no matter how young, should have the wisdom and the decision-making abilities of an adult. They speak as though the parents are horrible, irresponsible people for not watching the child's every move for taking their eyes off their child for even five seconds. This is disgusting. 
always, in cases like this, the majority sides with the dog and defends the dog. But any sane person would say it is unacceptable a child got hurt, regardless of the circumstances. Any sane person would say there is no excuse to have such a dangerous animal in our communities. Full stop. Any sane person with compassion would feel sorry for the child and his or her family. Any sane person would feel absolutely outraged, regardless of the circumstances, and they would side with the child, not the dog. They would hate the dog for what it did to the child. They would hate the fact that these dangerous beasts are allowed to live in our communities. They would hate the fact that these bred for blood sport monsters even exist. Anyone who thinks these child maulers are cute or lovable in any way, shape, or form is an extremely sick and disturbed individual, and we should avoid and, sh and we should shun such people. These unpredictable mutants are not worthy of our compassion at all. As far as I'm concerned, the only thing they are worthy of is a one-way ticket into the sun. Feeling this way does not make me a bad person. On the contrary, it makes me a loving person who directs her empathy and compassion where it belongs, towards the human victims. My anger and hatred is directed towards the perpetrators of these brutal attacks, as it should be. What is wrong with you people who have this backwards? These senseless, unnecessary dog attacks are an outrage, but what is even more outrageous is the fact that the majority of people are not outraged. They should be. They just seem to accept these attacks as a matter of course, like it's just the way it is and there's not much we can do about it. We can do something. We just don't want to for some reason I can't comprehend. We all know these horrific attacks are going to keep happening again and again and again, and yet nothing is being done about it. We can get rid of these creatures today. We can eradicate all of them so that these attacks quit happening. But people can't even imagine a society without dogs. <laughs> they can't even imagine a society without these fighting breeds. Like they can get any other type of dog, but nope, it's got to be these kinds of dogs. Why? We don't need them. They are killing our children. These people claim to be animal lovers acting out of a concern for animal welfare, yet they happily pay people to brutally torture and kill 56 billion harmless land animals every year, animals that pose no threat to us. But they like the taste of their secretions and their dead bodies, so that makes it okay. What a trivial reason to support the killing of animals. Yet when you propose we kill animals for a valid reason, such as the fact they are regularly disfiguring and killing our children, people lose their minds. These people don't care about animals. And if they are such kind-hearted, caring people, why don't they care about human babies? Whenever someone defends the dog instead of the child, I view them as no different from a sociopath. These people are extremely sick. They are scary and disgusting. They should be locked up in mental institutions, removed from society, banished. Anyone with such a lack of empathy and compassion for humans should not be allowed in human society. And yet, these are the very people who are creating our laws. These are our leaders. They are working to maintain the presence of extra dangerous dogs in our communities. I say extra dangerous because all dogs are dangerous. But those bred for blood sports, like all bully breeds, are extra dangerous because they are implicated in the vast majority of dog bite fatalities. These attacks are so unnecessary. They are all preventable. It is truly crazy that these attacks keep happening again and again, and we are doing nothing to stop it. And whenever someone has a normal reaction to these horrific attacks and pipes up calling for stricter laws, they are pounced upon, attacked, and bullied into submission. Why do these dog nuts oppose the creation of a safer society? Why do they fight against it with so much passion? Do they get off on hearing about kids being mauled and disfigured for life? Do they take pleasure in the regular reports of fatal dog attacks? It sure seems like it. This is the craziest shit that is going on in our society right now. Because not only is it absolutely crazy, almost no one sees how crazy it is. In an article from independent.co.uk published in October last year, it says they recognize the serious problem 
It says, quote, hospital admissions for dog attacks have increased by 81% since 2005, and an unacceptably high number of victims suffer life-changing injuries. Existing laws and the breed ban have not stemmed the rising tide of injuries and deaths from dog attacks. Children and adults are suffering horrific injuries, many of them unavoidable. This is unacceptable. The public must be properly protected, and we are therefore calling for a full-scale review of existing dog control strategies." End quote. So clearly the existing laws are not working. State of Affairs Committee Chairman Neil Parrish said, quote, The Dangerous Dogs Act was riddled with inconsistencies, harms animal welfare unnecessarily, and offers false reassurances to policymakers and the general public. All dogs can be dangerous, and we can't ban all dogs that might one day bite someone. End quote. Well, yes, Neil, we can. People just don't want to. We could eliminate all dogs from the face of the earth and thereby eliminate the problem of dog attacks once and for all. But no one will vote for this. Why not? Because they've been brainwashed. They have been programmed by the constant barrage of propaganda we are subjected to, telling us dogs are great. It is mind control. It's because this is a huge money-making racket. The pet industry is a massive $70 billion per year industry. Our leaders have a vested interest in keeping this industry going. They are not interested in public health. Money is more important to them than public safety. The article states, quote, The Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Committee said an independent review should be launched into the reasons for dog attacks and aggression, and it should examine whether banned breeds pose an inherently greater threat, end quote. We already know they pose an inherently greater threat. Looking at dog bite statistics from the USA, we can clearly see that blocky-headed, muscular-bodied dogs identified by the public as pit bulls are implicated in nearly three-quarters of all dog bite fatalities. Any dog with this type of appearance is inherently more dangerous due to its genetics and the fact that it was purpose-bred to fight and kill, just like hounds have an inborn propensity to track scent regardless of their upbringing or training. Dogs that were bred to attack and kill are doing most of the attacking and killing. Surprise, surprise! It's in their genes. It's part of what they are. Not all of these dogs will show sudden and explosive aggression, but they are far more likely to do so than other breeds. And when they do have a bad day, the damage they inflict is much greater than the damage inflicted by non-fighting breeds. So if the public isn't ready to consider an extermination program, the next best thing would be to improve upon breed-specific legislation, or BSL. Pitbull advocates always say BSL doesn't work. They share, quote, studies that show how in areas where BSL was enacted, the incidence of dog bites went up, not down, and they use this as proof BSL doesn't work. They are talking about minor dog bites that can be treated with band-aids. These minor dog bites increase in number as population grows. What we should be concerning ourselves with is the incidence of severe injuries and disfigurements. The fact is that BSL works wherever it is enforced. In the description, you will find a link to a dogsbite.org page, which explains that breed-specific laws absolutely reduce damaging attacks by pit bull type dogs. You will find a link to their ongoing report called Cities with Successful Pit Bull Laws, Data Shows Breed-Specific Laws Work, wherein you can read about how BSL has worked in many different communities. You can also find links to peer-reviewed studies from two different countries, Canada and Spain, which show that breed-specific regulations resulted in a significant decrease of dog bite injury hospitalizations. A long list of countries around the world have implemented strict bans, restrictions, and regulations upon ownership of extra dangerous dog breeds with success. The extra dangerous breeds that are banned, restricted, or regulated vary from country to country, but certain breeds appear consistently across the board. These include the Doggo Argentino, Doggo Canario, Brazilian Mastiff, Neapolitan Mastiff, American Pitbull Terrier, English Pitbull Terrier, Akita Inu, Toza Inu, Bull Mastiff, Doberman Pinscher, Staffordshire Bull Terrier, Rottweilers, South African Boer Bulls, and many other breeds, as well as mixes or hybrids, 
of a number of these breeds. If the citizens of the UK organize, rise up, and put pressure on their governments to improve upon existing BSL, and if they hold fast and not yield to the inevitable pressure of dog nuts who will fight tooth and nail to prevent such laws from being implemented, things will change for the better, and we will see a lot less suffering. This is terrorism, plain and simple. People are rightfully afraid to go outside. They are afraid for their safety and for the safety of their kids and livestock. We should not have to live like this. We are supposed to be a civilized society. If you are not upset and outraged by all of these senseless, unnecessary, horrific dog attacks on innocent people, ask yourself why. If you are upset and outraged, as you should be, it's time to act. Join that Facebook page I mentioned. Join forces with one another and put the pressure on. How many more children have to lose their faces or limbs? How many more have to die?